I look after strategy and partnerships at Time Bank. And today I'm going to talk to you about unlocking SME growth through digital banking, particularly in this environment that we have um, during the COVID and post-COVID recovery as well. So the current macroeconomic environment in South Africa, and obviously the implications of COVID have hit quite hard on SMEs in the country. And uh, there's been a lot of interventions from a government perspective, but some of them have not really made the impact that we require to see in that space. So a large component of what's creating this issue is the issue of financial inclusion. Challenges that the SMEs find themselves with is really around access. And solving access in this market requires more than just creating an app, having a debit card, and obviously being able to courier that card to customers. Right? I'll talk a little bit about Time Bank and our journey to financial inclusion. So how Time Bank started is really as a fintech that uh, wanted to provide a mobile money service. It was then acquired by the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, who were looking for an instrument to do innovative and new tech stuff outside of their own environment. We finally obtained a license from the Saab in 2017 to become the first black owned and fully licensed bank in 2018. Our main purpose really is really around financial inclusion. It's us understanding that we have to empower our people to reach their full potential by really creating affordable and accessible banking services for all. And over and above that, delivering a world-class customer experience that is digital, seamless, and not complex at all. Who supports us? We are majority share owned by African Rainbow Mineral, which then speaks to us being you know, South Africa's first black bank. That being said, you know, as a digital bank, which is one of its kind in South Africa right now, we are actually one of the fastest growing banks in the world. Having launched in 2019, within nine months of launch, we had reached 1 million customers, and we're currently sitting at 2.2 million customers and growing on an average of about 100,000 customers a month. If you look at all the digital banks that have sort of sprouted up in the rest of the world, there's obviously a trajectory that they follow, right? And uh, at some point, we were one of the fastest growing digital banks in the world. So a great opportunity in the South African market, predominantly because of the fact that a lot of the market is still very much underserviced or unserved completely. And there's a high penetration from a, from a um, telco perspective as well, in terms of people being having access to cell phones. Today, I'm going to talk specifically around SMEs. Right? There's been a lot of research around SMEs, and SMEs have been punted as a driver for growth in our country. But pretty much uh, what's happened in the last couple of years is that SMEs are still looking at the same challenges that they've had previously. So challenges that SMEs uh, find themselves faced with in our environment is always around access to funding, which is a huge one. There's issues around skills from a management perspective. There's issues around digital literacy. There's also issues around financial literacy as well. So we're finding more and more that as SMEs try to innovate in this environment, there are a lot of challenges that they run into that are inhibitive to, to their progress. And all of this is really focused on the kind of access they have to the support tools that they require. If we look at our country as well, we have a township economy versus a general economy that we have in the cities and in the suburbs, right? And J.C. Alcock, who, who's the author of um, Classic Economics Revolution, has actually mentioned that in this COVID times, we've seen that the Kasi economy has actually been able to thrive far better than our standard city economies, purely because firstly, the lockdown forced many of the workers to not be able to go into the suburbs and the cities. And secondly, the fact that spazas were eventually able to operate you know, with permits has made that economy thrive. But in essence, inclusion is going to be about us creating the linkages between the two economies so that uh, you know, our country will grow and thrive. So that being the case, when we look at the customer from a time bank perspective, is we're focusing on the key challenges that are experienced by SMEs, as we've spoken about, it's really been broken into two parts. It's access to markets in terms of them being able to access 
either the markets from a procurement and a delivery perspective, or even customers. And the other key one really is around funding. A lot of the SMEs that we have, due to many various reasons, are actually unregistered and undocumented, which means that they are unable to register from a tax perspective, and a large component of the work that they're doing is really cash-based. So another challenge that we see in terms of the financial services providers that are in this space, looking at trying to create options for SMEs, has been the focus on customer experience, as customer experience is you know, obviously sprouted as the new major thing in business in general. But what we found from SMEs specifically, and particularly from sole um, proprietors, is that solving their problem is the bigger priority to whatever customer service that we provide. So while we're a digital bank and we provide a seamless digital customer experience for the SMEs, we realized that the key problem that we need to address is around the actual challenges that they have internally from a business perspective. So Time Bank solves these unique barriers in these markets in three ways. There's clearly a, fun, a physical barrier in that um, the, the SMEs that we work with typically, as we said, are not registered. And challenges to that has been around being able to provide the right documentation, being able to get themselves to the banks and to be able to register themselves for, for services, right? So through our distributive retail model, what we do is we enable the, the SME to open up a bank account in no less than five minutes without having to bring any documentation in through um, basically allowing them to, to, to use their fingerprints and uh, facial recognition through our app to be able to open up a bank account. So in less than five minutes, the SME would have a full-on visa-enabled debit card and a bank account that is bundled with a goal save proposition. The second issue around access is really around um, financial access. So costs to actually get uh, SMEs to go into places where they will be able to access financial services have been prohibitive in the past. We found that some of our customers have had to find themselves going on to three or four taxes to be able to get to a town where they would be able to get some sort of service. So by enabling the environment to be within the retail sector, where people will generally be able to go in and have their, their groceries, we have created access that is affordable and is accessible to our customers as well. And lastly, there's always been an issue around financial services being very complex and difficult to understand. All our products that we have in our st uh, stable are pretty simple, not complex. From a pricing perspective as well, it's either free, two rand, four rand, or eight rand. So this then enables the customers to be able to better manage their budgets and for them to be able to plan forward ahead as well. So from a time bank perspective, I think we're safe to say we have cracked the code in terms of enabling that access in that market. I'll speak a little bit also around the role of partnerships, because obviously our unique selling proposition in solving for market access has been us being able to focus based on what we do, which is the digital enablement and the technology service, but really focusing on what the actual problem is from an SME perspective, we realize that we need to be able to partner with key people to enable market access. So as I've said, for us as a business, our strongest capability is really around the technology, which is a, which is a cloud system that is, you know, that has the, that it's stacked and, the, and the, gives us the agility to be able to architect and move differently. And also the data rich insights that we're getting with the customers that we are onboarding on a month to month basis. So when we look at a customer from an SME perspective at time, it's really around how can we leverage some of the partnerships that we've had to be able to give them access to thrive and do the best in what they need to do to run their business. Our proposition addresses the challenges that SMEs have in the fact that it's easy. Customers are able to get our proposition through our in-app or web face, through the smart recognition, uh, facial recognition that we have, or in store through biometrics via fingerprint recognition as well. It's also affordable, enabling customers to have a pay-as-you-use type of charge and there are no monthly fees as well. 
Another challenge that we've seen that SMEs have had has been around being able to access fund, funding. And that has been because of the fact that they've been unable to separate their personal finances from that of the business. Our proposition does it, it enables you to have two accounts on one profile where you would have to you'd be able to separate your personal banking from your business banking as well. Bundled with our proposition is the gold save capability that has got the leading interest rate in the country. That also leads to our challenges that we're trying to address from a financial literacy perspective, where we enable our customers to have an understanding of why it's important to be able to save and also to look at issues such as what their credit score is and why it's important to have that credit score. And lastly, because our proposition is linked to the pick and pay and boxer channel, customers are able to automatically be part of the Smart Shopper loyalty program. So this is bundled in terms of what you're getting from a, from a banking account perspective. But again, as we've spoken about, the challenges have not really been around financial services and banking services, but they've really been around how businesses operate and the challenges that they face from a business perspective. So as Time Bank, we've created a community of SMEs that enables them to speak to each other and we've provided them with the tools that they would require for them to be able to do their business. So it would be tools around procurement, around marketing, around budgeting, and some of the other skills that we've seen have been a big challenge for them. The other issue as well um, that we've, uh, we've sort of tried to solve as well has been around market access. So as a Zanzi Time Bank account holder from an SME perspective, you have access to the business locator which enables our 2.2 million customers and growing to have access to you and your services on our digital platform. It also enables them to be able to locate you in terms of the area that you're operating from. So the, the challenges that we've addressed are really some of the things that we think are key in terms of unlocking growth for SMEs in the country. As Time Bank, our focus has really been around financial inclusion and we continue to grow that. So we really feel that an active, engaged online community will equip and enable SMEs with tools and education to grow and develop. Pretty much similar to a business school model where we feel that as entrepreneurs engage with each other and share some of their challenges and their, their hopes and dreams, they will be able to grow and develop themselves. Very importantly also is that it's an enabling ecosystem where we are acting as facilitators for conversations around small businesses, both within the community of interest and in the country at large. Thank you.